Lincoln, pick up the keys. Still not sure about leaving him like this. He came through with the truck just like we asked. Even greased his part to make it look good. You got doubts? Why well, take the chance? We should get going. You got the keys so you can drive. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Come on, Lincoln, we burning daylight. God damn, that gets me every time. Take it easy here in the town. We don't need the cops crawling up our asses. Ah, oh, that poor fuck back there. He ain't got no idea what he's in for. What was his cut? Five percent? They're about, but not like he'll be able to spend it. Feds will be watching his every move for the rest of his life. Uh -huh. <laughs> Probably be better we just whacked him. If I learned anything in now, always a good idea to dangle someone out there. Use them to get everybody's attention, then you just slip away. So answer me this, what's the craziest thing you saw over there? You don't want to know. Hell, man, I'm a taxpayer. I got the right to know how my money's being spent. Oh, Georgie Marcano pays taxes. Damn right I do. That's how they got Al Capone, and I ain't going to prison for no fucking tax bill. Huh. So come on, you gonna answer the question or what? We, uh... We on the coast of Quang Nai, evacuating the civvies for Charlie overran everything. Anyway, we getting them onto a medical ship. And this woman walks up. She got a baby in one hand and the leash to a pig in the other. She starts up the ramp, and the MP stops her and tells her, you can only bring one thing on board. So she tosses the baby into the water. MP goes ape, tells someone dive in after the kid, starts screaming at the woman, wants to know what the fuck she's thinking. You know what she says to him? She says, I can always have another baby. Jesus fucking Christ. Hey, man, you asked. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you were going to tell me a story about some goop getting his dick blown off or something. I mean, God damn. It's not a fault. It's not like you think. The conditions over there, man. Jesus Christ. One day you're raising cattle, tending your rice. Next day everything bombed flat. You put people up against the wall, they will do anything to survive. That better have been one delicious fucking pig.
Dodge at the Missouri probably won't be too keen on you waltzing around with that piece of yours. I'll just leave it under the seat. Time to see if these forged IDs are worth a fuck. When I say something about being hot, that's when we make our move. All right. All right, here we go. Put your IDs up to the glass. We're part of the Boeing crew. What the fuck's this shit heel doing here? Affirmative action. You know how it is. Old country is spinning around a goddamn toilet. You can follow me. As for you, go on and grab those bags off the truck. You'll be carrying them to the burn room. How much y'all bring in? $238,546. Small bills, mostly. I'll have Miss Gale call up your office when we're done. She'll confirm the delivery. Appreciate it. You need to check that scatter gun. You packing anything? Still in training. Good. One less goddamn thing for me to worry about. You can pick it up on the way out. Buying room's down in the cellar. This way. I ain't seen y'all around these parts before. Y'all was over in Georgia for a while. He just got out the service. And my cousin's been trying to get on here for over a year now. Was in the Navy for two tours, got medals falling out of his ass. Government tells him thanks, but no thanks. That's a crock of shit if I ever heard one. Sad day when a God-fearing white man can't get a job, but that old nigga who staggers in is hired on the spot. You bastards better not be playing with each other back there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Christ, look at that. Didn't know y'all held that much gold. That Washington's been shuffling around on account of the war. It's here, then it gets sent to Dallas, then it comes back. It doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. <sighs> here we are. Put those bags on the table there. Never done this detail before. Figured it'd be bigger. I guess the job done. Only time there's a problem is when the flu clogs up. Fuck, that's some heat right there. Used to use coal for it, but a year or so back we switched over to oil. Maintains a more consistent flame. Here's some guy coming around the house trying to switch me over to oil. 
Told him I wasn't interested. I never was neither till I saw this. At least with oil, we don't get soot all over the gut. God, that guy was an asshole. We need to move. Danny and Ellis should be covered up any time now. All right, give me a second. <clears throat> You take care of those guards. Keep your ass down. You don't want them getting a drop on us. I know what the fuck I'm doing. <sighs> you know that house we've been renting out? Called over there last night. Told them I wanted to sell it. Told them they needed to be out in two weeks. And the man... Uh, John starts laying into me, saying the lease gives them the right to a 30-day notice. That's how he's supposed to find a new place in two weeks. So I tell him none of that's my goddamn problem. It's my property, and I'll do with it what I please. And if it brings up that fucking lease again, I'll use it to walk immediate. Not only that, I know he's friends with a couple of niggas, and they go over there at night and play cop. Come on, we need to get this vault open. Jesus Christ, it's a fucking robbery! I'll go for help! Hold on. I think this boy matches the suspect. Looking for cover! Ah! Ah! Ain't getting away with killing a cop, boy! What's he think he's doing? Help! Some help over here! here. from the police, boy.
come round from now. Goddamn, we shall kick the hornet's nest this time. Only way we walk out of here is if we get the weapon stored in that armory. Bust the door open. I'll watch our asses. <sighs> My old man gonna shit a brick when he hears about this. Fuck! Fuck! Come on, open! Give me that damn thing. Face way worse than this over in Nam. Little smoke don't mean shit. Stay close to the vault, watch for the drill. I'll deal with these assholes. Must be out of his mind.
Sammy's doing all right. Ever since we got your telegram about coming home, he's been climbing the walls. What if the plane crashes? What if the train's delayed? What if they call him back? And he goes stand in front of the kitchen window and sip his whiskey like he was expecting you to come strolling up the sidewalk. I don't say nothing about me telling you that. I won't. He'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since Mama had... Hey, man, be careful. Where was I? He'll be fine once he sees you. Ever since Mama Hell, you know how he gets. Damn, you scratching the paint! You remember Marty and Ron Langford? Sure. They moved up to Empire Bay a year or so after you shipped out. Started selling weed. They call and ask me if I want something. I say, sure. It's free money as far as I'm concerned. Anyhow, a month back, Marty drops me a line and says they're moving into heroin, that they're looking for a partner down around these parts. Can't imagine Sammy was too keen on that. I never told him about the weed. That ain't nothing to nobody. But this, I gotta talk to him about. I ain't said more than three words, and he's yelling about the feds. How we don't need J. Edgar up our asses, and what the fuck am I thinking? Selling dope with kids running around the neighborhood. We ain't selling no dope to no children. <laughs> like they got any money to begin with. <laughs> Fucking around aside, that was pretty serious shit. Knew a couple guys over in Nam who were running it. Wound up pissing off the wrong person. Got their throats cut. Shit, man, I know what's what. That's why I'm talking to Georgie about it. There's no way Sal's gonna go along with that. Georgie says he can keep his old man from fighting now. We'll steer clear of the hollow in Frisco, just selling the French wall. Georgie's Uncle Lou won't say shit as long as we give him a taste of the action. I don't know, man. Georgie's a cool cat and all, but heroin ain't the kiddie pool. Come in on it with us. I bet he'd agree to a three-way split. <sighs> I don't know. I kind of need to lay low a bit, figure some things out. Yeah, all right. Once you get settled in, I was thinking we could go to this new club in the French Ward. Maybe double dated. Well, who the hell am I gonna go with? Your great Aunt Beatrice? Oh, God. <laughs> I ever tell you I accidentally saw her without a shirt once? Oof. That woman has the droopiest, nastiest tits I've ever seen. <laughs> there were like two sacks of potatoes with nothing in them. Yeah, like that was a fucking accident. Hey, man, fuck you. I was damn lucky to walk away from that one. Anyway, you'll go with Regine. Regine? Believe me, once you see her, you're gonna want to dig right in. <laughs> Matter of fact. She got half the guys in the hollow sniffing around, asking her out. Turns them all down. She's only got eyes for you, Lincoln Clint. <laughs> fuck you. Wait and see, man. One look and your pecker's gonna pop right out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're going through the front. I ain't having your wall here, I ask you the back door.
Ha <laughs> ha.